Welcome to Slam Fire Radio, episode 467, recording live on Thursday, August 4th. I'm one of your hosts, Mo. 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 Oh, I'm Kelly. I'm Adriel. I'm Kyle. Dave's not here. I don't know why he's not here. He's not here. He ditched us once again. Yeah, that's okay. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. By the way, if a woman says fine, we can carry on. Okay. We'll get into what we did with guns. What we did with guns is brought to you by the Calgary Shooting Center, Canada's premier firearm retailer. Apparently, they have lots of Glocks now, 92 of them. Is that correct? 92. Yeah, they said they only have 92 in this shipment. Glock 44, 17 Gen 5, 17 MOS Gen 5s, Glock 17 Cs, Gen 4, 21s, 19s, Glock 48s. I'm going to be interested because... Calgary Shooting Center, they do Glock Days in April every year. Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen this April. Last year. No. Well, hmm. do you think they'll do Glock Days or do you think they'll do, you know, I don't know, Winchester 12 gauge. Anyways. Just knitting kidding. days. <laughs> RDB gauge days. Knitting days? Knitting. That sounds knitting. exciting. Mm-hmm. No. Knitting? No, it's not. No, underwater no. basket weaving. That's that's uh, the hit. Wow. Yeah. That sounds amazing. It doesn't. <laughs> uh, no. Let's get no. started with me. You want me to start? Okay, I can start. Yeah, no. Why don't you um, get started? You can do whatever the hell you want. You're the lead host. All right. I'm doing it then. <laughs> uh, I went to a match in Stittsville, Ontario. Uh, seven stages. It was a lot of fun. They were very creative stages. The um, match director there uh, does a uh, Jason does a really good job. He's very um, welcoming. Um, I didn't do so well, but I still had fun, <laughs> and it wasn't freaking hot, so that's also good. Uh, there was a stage where there was some targets at the front, and then you had to pick up a. Um, it was like a bowling ball, but the small one was at the 10 pin, 5 pin. I don't know bowling too well. Too well. And then you had five to carry it to another one. section of the. Sorry? Five pins, the small one. Small one. Okay. Yeah. Five There's pin, only then. five pins out there. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Seriously, to, to I don't have enough alcohol. I need to go get some because if this is the way the show is going to go tonight, I need to drink. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're just looking for an excuse. We're not your enabler, Kelly. Oh my god, <laughs> we're also drinking. We are your okay, not so a bad influence. Yeah, <laughs> it was a bowling ball of the smaller variety, and you had to carry it to the front of the stage. And before you could trigger the last targets, you had to place it into a, like a pipe that tr- that engaged uh, some swinging steel uh, steel plates. And I do terrible at the moving plates. So I would never be able to do a Texas star because I just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and so on. Um, (laughs) The rest of the match was pretty good. So uh, there was that. And uh, really, that's it for me. (laughs) How about you, Kelly? I went to Penetang Machine on the weekend. So I drove up on Friday night and stayed at one of our instructors uh, cottages right on the Georgian Bay. It's beautiful up there, by the way. Um, yeah, not so much beautiful going up the 400 on a Friday night, but on a long weekend in particular. Um, so that was a treat and a half, by the way. Uh, but once I got there, it was fine. Uh, got up early morning and went to the uh, Huronia, Huronia uh, handgun club. Nice little club, by the way. Uh, the shooters that were there were, they were excellent shooters. Really high uh, quality shooters. I wanted to say thank you to Jay, who is our contact at the range. And by the way, he has been listening to the show for over two days. And he's a huge fanboy of Adriel in particular. So everybody got patches. Everybody got swag at this event. And they're all listeners of uh, Slam Fire Radio. So fantastic day at the range. It was as Mo was saying, it wasn't too hot. Uh, we had six riflemen, six riflemen. Yeah, oh, that's uh, really good. Yeah, and Jay actually six out of twelve. Um, mm. So Jay in particular, he scored a two hundred and forty six uh, out of two hundred and fifty. Nice. Yeah, I know, right? Ontario, wow. Ontario's kicking Alberta's ass. Um. <laughs> 
however, the metrics on the Mad Men weren't that great because they all were fantastic shooters when they start started, but they oh, all I I had there one of those go. days in Grand Prairie. Same thing. They're all fantastic shooters, but they all melted by the end of the day. Yeah. <laughs> well, so um, overall, it was a great shoot. We had um, Russ Rodriguez uh, on the line as well as Adrian, uh, one of our instructors. So there was just the three of us, but it was so much fun. I got to call the line for the morning. It was awesome. It's like, I never do this stuff. Because all of the other instructors do it. And I got to call the line in the morning. It was awesome. I felt like I, I was put my bossy pants on. It was fantastic. <laughs> do you like did you make anyone cry? <laughs> I did not make... Oh, well. No, I didn't make anybody... <laughs> I didn't make anybody cry. Although, um, yeah, never mind. We'll talk about it after we get you off. Know. No, just kidding. It was a really, really good shoot. Um and yeah, I drove straight back because uh, I had work to do on Sunday and Monday, uh, which is another treat driving down the 400 on Saturday night. Uh, but yeah, I just had a really good time. I did not get to shooting yesterday. I've been working late nights uh, every night for the past. I can't remember how long. So I didn't get out to skeet shooting. So Kelly's been shooting with the, the guys. So I feel like I'm going to suck when I get back next week. Mm. I just know I am because I haven't been out. I haven't been out in a couple of weeks. I'm very sad about that. However, apparently 28 gauge is the new 12. Is that new correct? Hotness. The new hotness. The yeah. new hotness. New hotness. And I'm still, by the way, okay, now I'm officially going to bitch. I still have not gotten my transfer of my CZ. My shadow too. I still haven't got my transfer for uh, some 22 pistol I bought. I can't even remember what it was. Olympia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was figuring, I see, you know, all these people saying, I've finally got my transfer, got my transfer. I'm going, no. And it's what, August? August 4th? Summer holidays. It's August 4th, and I bought it when the announcement was made. So I'm still waiting. I'm a very patient person, as you can tell. Mm -hmm. But now I'm starting to get bitchy. Anyways, okay. Adriel, what did you do now that you started to drink a drink of water and your mouth is full? Water? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see here. So I did a big 10 to order. Uh, they had that, uh, what was that ammo? STV Scorpio, some sort of like 9 millimeter ammo. They had a deal for 2,000, so I got 2,000 of that. I got some percussion caps for my uh, muzzle loader. Got some bullets, 9 nice. millimeter bullets. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going so to get like, to, you know that? The the muzzle loader. That's what I'll be left with after they That's ban everything we'll, else. Yes, we'll be three gun with the muzzle loader. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Sounds be like uh, two, three shots. Fun. That's all. That's yeah. all I got the patience for. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, and, and um, I saw some reviews on Reddit for that STV stuff, and they they were really bad. <laughs> like, oh yeah, uh, between one and five percent failure rate on uh, on the primers. Now that was with their Glock, and one guy said that it was fine with their Shadow too. <laughs> Mm. whatever it was cheap uh well, not even that cheap actually now i think about it but i bought that so I, I got the nine millimeter bullets because i'm like man this is some bs what if, maybe i'll find some small pistol primers uh i bought a rifle for my buddy dave and the guy i met i'm like hey what other stuff do you have for sale and he's like i don't know i'm like do you have any small pistol primers he's like you know i'm sitting on too much right now just in case i get back in tipsic i'd sell you some if you want i'm like oh hell yes Get me some of the primers, so he sold me two thousand. So, thank you very much, Shane. Uh, that's uh, very Shane. Appreciated. Do you have friends with primers? <laughs> <laughs> we, we all we all need friends. Maybe with I shouldn't primers. have used his name. <laughs> <laughs> Shane. Get people like, hey, I heard you have primers knocking on his door. There are many Shanes in Edmonton. Who knows which one I talked to? Uh, and then my buddy Thomas was uh, was ripping around buying like all sorts all over Edmonton. So I'm like, if you find nine millimeter bullets, buy them. So he found some, bought, bought me some more of those. If you find a tumbler for a good deal, got one of those. So because um, he's going to be, he, um, he was looking at some 30 odd six ammo and it's stupid expensive. So I'm like, no, no, no. Get some components, come over to my house. We'll reload like 100 rounds or something like that or 200 rounds. And you'll be set for life, depending on how much he wants to shoot, shoot it, right? So, what tumbler um, did you get? The or the Hornady one, just the orange, like yeah, or no, okay. 
I just like I, I, mostly I don't care about my nine millimeter ammo. Uh, my two two three, some of it's like a little bit greasy. It's got some like sizing lube on it. I just want to like chuck it in the tumbler for like ten minutes after I, I finish, just to shine it up so it doesn't like grease up the chamber and that kind of thing. Uh, but now that I have it, who knows? Who knows what kind of ridiculous stuff I'm going to get up to. <laughs> and then I was over at Tundra Supply, and they had powder. They had powder for super reasonable prices. They had some BCL2 for 59 bucks, which these days is a reasonable price. I think Cabela's is selling powder right now for like $85 a pound. So, uh, whew, get what you can. And they had the Pyrodex, like the powder for the muzzle loader for... I think it was 49 or 45 or something like that. It was a little, it was cheaper. Uh, so I got a couple, I got some of that stuff. And then, so I had, I had my uh, nephew over. So my son and my nephew and I were working on this guy for the last couple of weeks. This is a uh, oh, Kentucky traditions rifle and it's long. <laughs> it's got Whoa. a pretty long barrel. It's a uh, 32 inches. Uh, look at this butt stock. Look at this curvy, like, Oh, uh, <laughs> it's just okay. so pokey. It's so pokey. I've no. I looked up. I'm like, why is it made like that? And the best guess guess for people was like, oh, you can like ride on a horse and like hook it on your arm like that, uh, or you can really butt stroke someone with one of these things. They got like yeah. a nice uh, brass. T- you know, you could you could do some damage there, I guess. But okay, stroke. it's all. Yeah, I'll hit them in the head. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to use a yeah. bullet. That's, it takes me like a minute to reload. Ah! <laughs> so when they were, when they were originally made, people were how do I say this? A little less chunky, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Do you call the gauge real chunky? How's that supposed to fit in your shoulder pocket? It doesn't. Look at it. Well, look at that. I'm not chunky. Look at look at the gap that's there. Ah! ah. It's so uncomfortable. I'm not going to shoot this a lot. They were like stick okay. on the wall. Go. I was. Uh, go get Carson and tell him to hold it because that's the size him too. That, that was, was the bad. size of the people back then. No, it's terrible. It's terrible for him too. You can't put it here on your shoulder. You gotta like you gotta put it out on your shoulder like a fair bit. I gotta I could I could shoot it oh, right there. there. You go. Yeah. Like that's that's not on my that's like getting over to my like shoulder muscle. <laughs> Anyways. They were not known for their accuracy. Uh Where is that? Rifled. It's got a rifle barrel. Oh, and really? so I, yeah, I'm going to run patched balls in it because that's like more authentic than uh, conicals or whatever. But uh, well, it's like I, I like it. There's a uh, there's a bunch of like the lock work is, is sh- really uh, yeah. good. I so want to uh, that. Triggers fine on it. Um, you know, a, a couple of things like like I mentioned to you guys, I was really wanting to just put boiled linseed oil on this thing, but I kept watching other people's finishing these things. They all stained it. So I'm like, oh, my God. Maybe it's going to look like crap. On the inside of this barrel channel, I went straight boiled linseed oil. It didn't darken up very much. So I'm like, oh, mm, maybe I'll stain it first. Now that I've stained it, I wish I just on the, it. I, I wish I just on the boiled linseed oil because the inside of the barrel channel, it was it's fairly rough. So maybe it just didn't soak up enough oil to darken it uh, like it did. Because I, I did the ramrod rod, just boiled linseed oil. No stain at all on it. And it looks great. It's uh, like that you can definitely see the grain in there. It's got good definition. But the stock really took the uh, the stain oddly, especially the forend here. Some parts are very, very dark. Some parts are light. Normally, gun stocks are like that. I would say like this butt stock here looks fine. It's yeah. uh, it's it, it looks like, like exactly anything what else. What type would. of wood is it? I don't know. I think it was maple. I think maple. But uh, don't quote me on that because I don't actually know. Um, I still have to put a couple more coats on this. It's still uh, it's still got a little bit of a rough you're texture. Gonna, to it. Yeah, you're going to leave it like that. You're not going to put shellac or anything on it. Um, more more lin- linseed oil. So I'm going to I'm going to yeah. hit it with some uh, um, steel wool. Uh, smooth it up. Another coat of linseed. Leave it for another couple of days and then uh, and then go again. But uh, it was a fu- it was a fun project, very uh, pretty easy to do. And uh, I think I'd say that the only like downsides to it were you need a special drill bit to uh, drill the tenons in here. There's a pin underneath this uh, this wood cover here that I just put on. Uh, so there's uh, two of those, and you need like a special a numbered drill, not like just anything from your standard drill kit, and uh, that. <laughs> if I was going to shoot this thing, I would lop this stupid thing off and I'd put like a, a butt pad on here or something like something, something better. But uh, mm-hmm. I, I'm not really planning on shooting it all that often. So uh, 
that'll just be something to like, it was a fun project and it'll sit on the wall or whatever. You'll put I'd it highly on. recommend it for three ninety nine. I think it's a good deal. It's a good project for the you and the kids to do together yep. too. Yeah. Yeah. The next project I'm going to be working on is that bench, and I'm going to go pick up some. I I've got my oh. my size and whatnot set out, and uh, it's going to be big. I'm going twelve feet by three feet deep. Beep. Normally a bench will be like two feet deep. Nah, I got the space. I got the shop space. I'm going three feet. I want like unlimited shelf space so, so what are you nice. building at uh, just wood just wood i'm gonna go two okay. by fours for the uprights and i'm probably i don't uh, uh, my brother was trying to convince me to use like melamine for the top to yeah. get like a nice weatherproof top but i don't know how like durable it's going to be like to drill a press onto that thing um no, I'll need to put, i'm going to put two presses yeah. on there so i think i'd rather go with like three quarter inch plywood uh and then just screw the heck out of it do a bunch of uh uh, like two by four studs, like a like a frame note wall would be like every sixteen inches, kind of a thing, and then just ship slap it all together. It's huge, though, twelve feet, nice and big. Uh, yeah. what's that? They're right on. You're just doing single layer with the plywood, or do double layer? I think so. I don't want. I don't really think it's going to be reason. Uh, it's going to be needed. I might put a reinforcement where I put the press. Like uh, I might I might either do like uh, a bit of metal. Um, or just double layer or something like that, just to give it a little bit more height. Yeah, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, and then as I was going through my reloading supplies, I found <laughs> I've got a whole bunch of dies that I, I, I like dug into the, my like sealed boxes of old reloading stuff, and I found a whole bunch of broken D priming uh, pins for the for the lease. So I emailed them and like, yeah, we'll send you ones for free. You just have to pay for shipping. So I've got four of those I think on the way. Uh, and then uh, Tom just dropped this off today. It's a, a release for the kid. It's a it's a magazine release for the uh, the mm -hmm. kid. It said kid magazine release. I'm like, cool, 1022 mag magazine release. But the kid, it was for the kid trigger pack. So mm -hmm. I, I I can't use it. I'm like, uh, now I guess I have to buy a kid trigger pack for my 1022. <laughs> maybe, maybe. I might have I might have messaged someone on CGN who had one for sale, like the whole rifle with the kid, like single action uh, trigger kit, trigger component thing with Bobber, and uh, I'll see if he's willing to to part it out because I don't want the whole rifle. I just want that trigger pack and like good luck finding him right now. Alaska's all out, and uh, yeah, I just want a used one. If I want it, yeah. So I'm gonna go like right after this. I'm gonna go for a trip to Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that and get some wood butcher block top. I was thinking about it, but uh, I can get I can get a sheet of plywood for seventy bucks, and uh, I'll need two two sheets of plywood. Mm -hmm. Butcher block would be cool. Yeah, but I I need to like screw and like bolt stuff to it so functional. It's probably it's, you know what color it's gonna get. What I got, green screen green. <laughs> That's what's getting. Mm -hmm. Gonna look nice. Mm -mm -mm. Well, then in that shop, so that's where I'm gonna, all my reloading is gonna be in that shop. I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna move a sofa in there, TV, beer fridge, furnace. Yep. You're muted, Kelly. Kelly you are like, muted. Yeah. If you're trying to like add add in some quips here, I'm not ignoring you. Well, technically I am, I guess. <laughs> you didn't hear that, did you? No. no. <laughs> no. Anyways, uh, okay. So you have a couch. Mm -hmm. You have a. What else are you adding? Beer TV. fridge. Beer fridge. TV. Beer TV. Fridge. TV. Reloading. Reloading bench. Reloading. Bathroom. You're going to do like a little uh, compostable toilet. You're good to I go. Was you never of, uh, of cutting a hole in the wall <laughs> and yeah. just. Yeah. Or what do you do, like piss uh, jugs or something like that? No, you mount a <laughs> urinal to the side of the wall uh, and it runs outside. Uh, what about the piss jugs, though? Excuse me, that's the guest piss jug over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, something about rooms with holes and walls. No. Okay. <laughs> it's not a bathhouse. <clears throat> You're not going to get monkey pox. <laughs> Just something to think about. <clears throat> All right. Kyle? Okay. Just something to think about. <laughs> well, I did actually get out shooting this uh, past weekend. Went out Sunday with Lyle and Candace at the 
club and tested out the Canadian Field Sporting course because I'm not going to shoot it during the match for registered. So we all went out, tested that out, made sure the targets were all set nicely. And it was good because we had three different levels of shooters shooting it. And uh, it was good. I was really happy to get out and shooting. And yeah, shot about 70% on Sunday. So definitely happy with that. And the rest of the time has literally been just prep for this weekend, making sure the club stuff is all sorted, menus, and that we have everything together for the Western Canadians happening. So, so yeah, and I'll be shooting that this weekend. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I'll go out Saturday, shoot the main, and shit the bed again probably. So... <laughs> Oh no! It's important. Set reasonable expectations, Positive. reasonable goals. Yeah. It sounds like you have one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. No, that... no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mo, you're too nice. Oh. <laughs> Come on. No, because I thought I, I've gone out there thinking that I was going to shoot better than I do, and I don't. So low expectations can't be disappointed. True, true fact. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And then be pleasantly surprised. Why shoot for the moon <laughs> when you can shoot for just above your head? Yeah. Although I the did mark. have actually something interesting today. It's not necessarily shooting. Like when I was prepping my, well, I was grabbing the big trailer from the driveway to haul down to the range and started putting the power cord in and a couple of wasps are coming out of the hole that you put your power cord into. Uh-oh. So that was fun. Hmm. Yeah, have to get rid of a hornet's nest before taking the trailer down to the range. <laughs> you just spray a bunch of that wasp killer in there, or just like spray yeah. them and just well, like give up on it. Well, thankfully, my neighbor and landlord has bees, so she had a spare bee suit that she could loan me. And yeah, went in there with the foam stuff, and I I had probably about four different cans of different stuff that I was going in there with pulled the cover off and got it out. And it was a good size. Like it was probably about good six, eight inches across around. Wasp this. Nest. Yeah. Hmm. And yeah, cause I always keep my trailer plugged in at home and yeah, it just hasn't moved this year. And well, there we go. But anyways, it, uh, so the whole, you know, spray can with lighter is not going to work cause it's actually attached to your house. Correct. That well, point? no, it's not attached to the house. It's kind of like a portable house. So no, I know, but it, you said it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to like. <laughs> okay. You drive it around. It trails behind you. I yeah. Want to call it a trailer. <laughs> yeah. Your insurance is good, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, insurance doesn't like it. What were no. you doing? I was getting rid of a harness test. How are you doing that? Yeah. It was all can and a lighter. Although, to be honest, and this is weird, that the flamethrower did not cross my mind. What? I do have a flamethrower, but right? no, that didn't cross my mind. Like, Tannerite didn't cross your mind either? No. I think outside the box. Nothing great. No. No, I, I wasn't. No, it was this morning. I must have not had enough coffee or something. Bee suit sounds badass, though. I'd love yeah. to just go mano a mano. No, no spray or anything, just your hands. <laughs> so you think that you just go in there and be like, yeah, I'm not worried. I'm wearing a bee suit. Nah, no, we're, you're still see one fly and you dodge, trying to dodge them. Like, I don't know, I'm just a pussy. But. <laughs> I'm not going to say a word, oh but I... <laughs> You so, should have come on with the beekeeper outfit on. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. <laughs> guy, that guy, would have been good, yeah. Guy at work today, he was looking at how to remove a stump. And I said, I've got Diesel. a method to remove. No, I said, I've got Tannerite. I've got guns. And he goes, I live in the city. I said, yeah. And? <laughs> and? <laughs> Anyways. Said, no. That would work good. Dig a hole underneath it and then yeah. turn it off, set the tannerite off. Yeah. Oh. oh, speaking of tannerite, I got fine. I got a goal for next year for uh, Melon Fest. Crystal found a video and the guy had like a 114 pound watermelon. I need to find one of those for next year. Get one of those big pumpkins from like a pumpkin growing festival when they're done and it's all like rotten and like just fill it. 
Yeah, but rotten that, pumpkin like, over Melon everyone. Fest is July. It's going to be beyond rotten by then. Mm. Okay. That's disgusting and gross. It's <laughs> rotten melon. <laughs> <laughs> Put the kids in the splash zone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you may want to wear your beekeeper <laughs> outfit for that little experiment. <laughs> That's a hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay remember i might not have to bring out the jamesons if we don't i'll move on <laughs> you to, okay kyle no. you good <laughs> yeah i'm good <laughs> tannerite and beekeeper outfits got it oh hey hey i know what we can dress up as for our uh, halloween episode What's beekeepers that? beekeepers with Tannerite and Jameson's. Let's go. <laughs> and Jameson. We'll get into uh, upcoming oh. events sponsored by Tealess Alpha. <laughs> Tealess Alpha is a Canadian digital agency that works exclusively in the farms <laughs> vertical. They help with business practice processes, strategic planning, websites, e-commerce, and battling the stigma the industry carries with banks, merchant processors, and social media. Learn more at tealessalpha.com. So we have Maple Seed events available that you can find on mapleseedrifleman.com. Uh, Chilliwack, sorry? I said, yeah. Chilliwack's uh, already done. It was today. So we're done. Oh, all right. So we'll move on. Redmondville, Smithers, Dawson Creek, Blind Man Valley, Tracyville, Cornwall, Broken Head, Fort Mac, and Atlantic Marksman Association. Hey, so what are you doing either on August 20th or 21st there, Mo? It's uh, only an hour's drive from your location. Ish. I'll have to see. I'll have to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just well, I, don't want, I don't want to sign up for a test that I'm going to fail again, so I got to be ready you know, for it this time. You. It's not a test you're going to fail. It's actually, it's all about, it's a date to have fun and go shooting with your friends. It's about progress, not and progress. It, exactly. Don't let perfection get in the way of progress. And what happens if I do worse? You're not gonna do worse. There's a patch for that. <laughs> <laughs> There's a patch for doing worse. <laughs> Just messing around. I guess that's uh, something, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a CRPS event in Medicine Hat on August 6th. And uh, at Sherwood S Park, SPFGA, August Sherwood Park, okay, uh, August 12th, and uh, Saskatoon. There's an, X22. There's an X22 in Sherwood Park as well on August 14th, X22 yep. in Saskatoon okay. on August 21st, uh, Sniper Series at Twisted Rooster Ranch in Saskatoon oh, on August 25th. Hmm. I'm gonna and, fly in for that one mm. just because I get to go to uh, roosters, anyways, go. Sorry. Uh, register for those at rimfireprecision.ca or on practice score. Uh, that Sherwood Park one, they are looking for more registrations or they make cancels. So get on it. Mm. Get on it so we can go shoot some. Yeah, you should be able to solve so. that. That's in Edmonton. Come on. It's been, a bit, it's been a weird year. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. What's next? I keep saying what's next. I should okay. Shut up. Um, Kyle, you want to take this one? <laughs> Sure, there's the CNSCA Western Canadian Championship. So that's the Canadian National Sporting Clay Association at Wapiti Shooters Club this weekend, August 5th to 7th. Poster is on CNSCA Facebook or the Wapiti Shooters website, but it's starting tomorrow. Come on out, shoot some clays. It's going to be a good time. Lots of good food, good people. Walk ons are welcome. Absolutely. Awesome. So there's an ORPS match at Lord Trent Valley on September 4th. Uh, go to practice score and have a look at it. It's $25. I'm going to be there. So come out. That's that one. Okay. And then we have <laughs> TACOM on September 9th, 10th, and 11th. So that should be an awesome event, and it's good to have it back after a couple of years away. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And next year, as I said, they're going to have 12 gauge and also the muzzle letters that Adriel's building. <laughs> yes. <laughs> muzzle letters. Uh, That's a it's be booth after booth after booth of muzzle loading stuff. You're negative, Nancy, tonight. 
<laughs> and then there's the uh, coming up on August 26th. There's the lunatic lunatic tactical shotgun mania challenge. There is. Mm-hmm. Go sign up on practice score for that. Right. I'll be in Alberta, but I'm not going to it. Sorry, guys. What a snub. What an amazing snub. She's going to be in the same province. And she's like, nope, you guys are going to be there. I'm going to be in Calgary. Ish. Um, <laughs> unbelievable. The better of the cities in Alberta. Yeah. And then uh, for Ladies' Days, Kelly, also known as the CCFR's Women's Division, is looking to support sponsor Ladies' Days events at your range. This is a range-driven initiative, range driven initiative, but if you'd like sponsorship and support, contact Kelly at slamfire at slamfireradio at gmail.com or info at farmsrights.ca. Yep. And by the way, I and, started uh, – oh, sorry. I, I just want to say I have started posting a lot of them within – uh, social media as well. So look out for uh, Peterborough. There's a one in Peterborough on September 3rd. Uh, there is an event in Dunville, uh, Ontario on August 20th. There's an Annie Oakley event at um, BTSA. That's going to be happening at the, I think it's the 20th, I believe, August 20th. Anyways, there's a whole bunch of them that are happening. So if you are a female or you know of a lady that's looking to go to these ladies' days, uh, go to the CCFR page, or you can actually go to my page, and all kinds of events are starting to be populated on there, and go and sign up. I'm going to be at the Lower Trent Valley one this weekend. Sorry. I'll be quiet now. <laughs> okay, so um, is this a real news story that we're doing? <laughs> 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 I just thought we didn't have anything in there, so I just thought I'd put something in there. Yeah, so it works. Uh, we're going to talk about Trudeau's new haircut and whether it looks like the Dumb and Dumber guys. <laughs> well, I don't think there's really much of a discussion uh, there. It definitely does. No, he does. He does. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, all I can say about that. That's anything all else. <laughs> <laughs> No. Uh, no other news other than no other news no other news really no it's a slow news week yeah. i guess they that's need... good or bad Meh. well they're <laughs> never mind i was going to say they were just saving it up for the next one um yeah, yeah. that but that would be negative <laughs> as, negative as... <laughs> nancy also known as kelly <laughs> Well, let's get on to the ultimate contest because it's so much. Okay, more the ultimate contest. Yeah, I've decided that if I win the ten thousand dollar prize, I'm just going to buy nine mil ammo and not have to reload for a while. I forget the current price is it's twenty two, twenty two thousand <laughs> rounds, something like that. So, oh, I was going to say a thousand. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, come on, come plus on. shipping. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Anyways, plus shipping. <laughs> So, yeah, so definitely enter for a chance to win uh, first place, which is 10K, shopping spree, second place, 5K, third place, another 5K. And then there's also uh, some $1,000 prices. So every $25 donation gives you a chance to win. So you can win to buy ammo or Olympia 22s or I guess that's it. Yeah, go over to the uh, CC for our website, make a donation. Yeah, nice, nice scoops. Should also become members, by the way, too. Because the more membership oh, I there think is, so. yeah. Yep. And then it also comes yeah. with insurance. And then, yeah. Anyways. Sean's asking we, if there's supposed to be some sort of OIC or update on the ban in September. Yeah. And that will be, really the discussion on that will be when the house <laughs> rises again. Yeah, right now, everything yeah. is, there's nothing right now. Um, I do believe that the court case was moving forward and there was so be some things happening in September so I'm assuming that there will be updates as that takes place so obviously with the house um, that has risen for the house has risen for the holidays so when they come back in in September I'm sure that by October we'll have some the yeah the ban will have passed by then yeah I think Dumb and Dumber is in Costa Rica right now so he's yeah yeah. Did you uh, see Sean the one with the three that, planes? Uh... Hmm? Hmm? What did you say? Did you see the meme with the three planes? Yes. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
One for him and his ego, one for Sophie because she can't stand him. And what was the third one? One for a surfboard. One for a okay. surfboard. There you go. I'm not even sure Sophie's there. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Sean's saying that he keeps hearing something about magazines. Yeah, there's magazines are supposed to be part of it. There's supposed to be something yeah. to do with rifle uh, long gun magazines being limited to five. That's all we've heard. So that might mean like all long gun magazines to fire. That might mean semi-auto, might be detachable mag, might be center fire. Who knows? Who knows? All we've heard so far is long gun magazines to five. All long gun magazines to five. There'll be more information on it. They'll have to do um, more readings and we'll have to go before the Senate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. That'll be a fall thing. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so hopefully all the more there is to... an early election. Sorry, I'm just uh, reading um, more okay. feedback from. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm hoping as well. Yeah, we all. I think we all hope so. I don't care if there's an early so election the... or not. I care that it's the right election at the right time. Correct. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. Okay. Uh, So now more than ever, it's important that you donate to the CCFR for the core challenge. You can do so by EMT to finance at farmsrights.ca, or you can actually go on the website as well. Um, Slamfire Radio is a brand ambassador. Uh, Sorry to interrupt. I I think that uh, I think we talked about it a little bit last week, but we haven't done anything about it. Uh, But I think that we're going to have a fundraiser. Uh, we're going to be doing something with a fundraiser for our listeners. Isn't that correct? Something. Gonna... Yeah. Something. So stay tuned. Maybe we'll do it next week. Now that I've, uh, now that I've talked about it, so people actually can hear, that <laughs> I mean that we have to do something. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we got some things to give away. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll come to your right birthday there. party dressed in a beekeeper's outfit or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on before Kelly yells at me. So. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't yell at you. Slab Fire Radio is a brand ambassador for Bolt Action Coffee. The coffee is roasted in small batches and quite as and quite and is quite honestly some of the best coffee you can get your hands on. Send it to your house by going to boltactioncoffee.com. Discount code Slam Fire, all uppercase. And we'll get into new gun stuff. The first one here is ATRS has some FX9s and WSMCRs, and they're comboing Ooh. it with some of the other stuff that they sell. So if you're looking for, they have an FX9 that you can combo with the Vortex Spitfire and save 50 bucks on that. Who's that? Uh, ATRS, okay. Alberta Tactical Rifle Supply. Sorry, we use so many abbreviations here that I just get used to them. Yeah. I was uh, talking to somebody about that the other day. ATRS. Combos Got are it. good. Who doesn't love combos? Yep. And then they also have the WSMCR, another uh, abbreviation there, and the ATRS Tyrant Muzzle Brake, and you can save 50 bucks on that if you would like. So, uh, nice. And they have some other combos that you can get, so check out ATRS for that. Uh, the next one I have here is that Tenda Canada has a sale on CCI Blazer Brass. It's 9 millimeter, 115 grain full metal jacket for eight nineteen for 2,000 rounds or $410 per thousand. If you buy 2000 at the same time, buy the 2000. Mm-hmm. Uh, Soli Outdoors has some Hodgdon tight group smokeless. They have uh, four pound cans for 218. Ooh. That's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. It's not horrible. Like... Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, if you've been in the game for a long time, you look back and you're like, man, I got a jug of that for 200. I got an eight pound jug for 200 bucks. But like, back in the day and it was like a it was a greasy deal like wheeling and dealing with some guy who's getting out of reloading and <laughs> it's kind of hard to, to keep all this new stuff to that standard right <laughs> yeah you can't compare uh, it to range, a greasy deal come on yeah range view sports has cci small pistol primers which are impossible to find i've been looking uh they're selling them for 15.99 per hundred you can only buy five <laughs> units per order so wow uh, that is insane well, good luck. Times are it. tough. Good luck. Yeah, well, that's it. 150 yeah. bucks a thousand like that. No, it's not because you can't buy a thousand. Well, yeah, you've heard, yeah, buy you can't buy a thousand, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we're not buying. This is just for locals, right? If you're a local yeah. to range you, because like if, if we were to buy that, 
we can only buy five and you get nailed with a hazardous shipping fee on top of it. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Yeah. yeah it, it really doesn't make it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then Marstar has some blazer ammunition, uh, 115 grain aluminum case. I think this is 359 per thousand, uh, which is cheaper than the other stuff. So mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. All right. I've shot a bunch of this out of my uh, shadow. <clears throat> That's fine. Yeah. Not great for uh, Ipsic because no, it, you won't make you power like, factor. Yeah, you won't make power factor on it. Yeah, and then North Silva is bringing in Scorpio bolt action twenty twos. They have thirteen inch barrels, which are Shorty. real goofy looking. Yep. Hey. Ooh. Yeah. I had, one of these. <laughs> I had one of these with a regular size barrel on it. It looks like they updated the uh, bolt handle on them. Yeah, it looks beefy. like they're including a rail. Mm-hmm. Probably because they got rid of the front sight and they're like, why do we even have sights on this if we're going to go with a 13 inch barrel? Mm-hmm. Yep. It's got a threaded muzzle cap on there. It looks like a threaded mm-hmm. muzzle cap. I assume yep. it is a threaded muzzle cap. Yeah, bolts different. It's more of like a tactical style Coke can kind of a thing. And then, I don't know, some scope mount of some kind. Yep. I actually found out how to mod those. Uh, those mags for that gun for my NS522. So that's what I'm running in there. Everything works in everything. You just have to have a Dremel and uh, <laughs> no shits about whether you wreck a mag or not. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's no such thing as doesn't fit. <laughs> There's no such thing. A hammer, a Dremel, some way it's getting in there. I will yeah. make it work. I'll make it fit. Mm-hmm. So welcome to the show, Taylor. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Now, we wanted to have you on because you were at Ipsic Nationals here, and uh, and that just happened oh recently here. And I heard you did pretty well. I heard you did pretty well in there. <laughs> yeah, I did pretty good for myself. Yeah, uh, that was my first Nationals. I was able to uh, become the new champion. I'm the 2022 uh, champion in production optics. Yeah, you know, um, I didn't realize how much heat there was in production optics. Like, I was looking at the... Uh, uh, at practice score and overall, and like my God, there was there are some like heavy hitters in production optics these days. Yeah, it's it's kind of the it's the go-to division if you're if you're not ultra rich. Uh, everyone <laughs> wants to shoot a dot, so I mean you get to do so without having an eight thousand, ten thousand, twelve thousand dollar race gun. Yeah, you know it was, it's it's kind of interesting because I, I always felt like red dots on pistols like yeah that's that's interesting but i don't know if like how how many people are just i'm not interested in that i've got too many reps on iron sights but then <laughs> i'm wrong cuz <laughs> there's a ton of people that are interested in it and, and, yeah. and clearly a lot of people that uh, that are curious about it and starting to uh, to put more dots on their guns mm-hmm. it's the future it's definitely the future now one thing i i heard uh, one thing about these ipsic nationals i heard there were a lot of long shots can you confirm that is was there a lot of long shots was the dot like a big advantage for that for that for it yes and yes uh when you look at the match copy i mean for, for any match going in uh you don't typically you don't base your your experience off the match copy but when you get on the ground and you see the the poppers which look like minis and they're full they're full poppers yeah we had uh, we had a, at least eight or 10 poppers at about 35 yards. And then there was one stage that had 45, what I paced to be about 45 yard poppers. So wow. they really stretched it out on us. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's, that's pushing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't practice that at all. <laughs> Perfectly <laughs> honest with you. I, I figured they, they heard some guy stopped the mass shooting at 40 yards and they decided to just push out all the steel there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is, this is your first nationals. It, you came from like, uh, how long have you, been, have you even been shooting Ipsic for? Uh, Ipsic handgun. I, I well, I got my black badge in 2019. So yeah, I guess we can we can pull it all the way back to 2019. That's uh, that's when Kyle and I decided that we were gonna head off to Shotgun Nationals, and so we said we need our black badge, right? I uh, got my black badge, shot my shot my qualifier match just to just to lock that down with the intention of just going to Shotgun Nationals and getting back into three gun, and. Uh, kind of like the match that I shot. So I figured once, once I'm back from nationals, I, I, uh, I try and give that a go. And so, yeah, 2020, I went all in on, on handgun. Uh, I shot a lot of matches. I shot probably, I think it was 14 qualifiers Whew. in Ipsic, Alberta. And then, uh, and then Ipsic, Alberta provincials. 
and that was my 2020. So that was kind of my, my failure year. That was, uh, I got a lot of experience in that. And that was, I met a lot of great people. I kind of got introduced into the, the IPSC family. Uh, 2021, I started taking it uh, even more seriously. Uh, I didn't shoot as much, but I mean, it, it was a pandemic, right? So we, yeah. we basically just shot as much as we could. And, and they announced the matches at the start of July, and we just went, we just went, bam, 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 match, match, match. And uh, yeah, went to Provincials last year in Brooks and shot a really good match and won Provincials in that. And nice. figured, well, okay, let's, uh, let's take this to the next level. <laughs> <laughs> So p- pretty short, pretty short timeline then. I mean, you shot three gun before then, and you and you, and you were a pretty accomplished three gun shooter. Like you, you did mm-hmm. pretty decently in matches at that. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, not not a long time. No, I, I mean, I shot three gun for a couple years before I I even got my black badge. So it's not like I just picked up a gun and and jumped right in and started winning, right? <laughs> uh, I kind of I learned how to shoot with you guys. Uh, it was what 2016, 2016, I shot a handgun for the first time got hooked. It was just a local club match at, at BTSA mm-hmm. and got hooked on that. Got a Smith and Wesson M&P and an AR and pulled up my pump shot in. We went three gunning at BTSA and I didn't even know that there was matches out there. It was just kind of a thing that we did. And then, yeah, met, uh, met Adro, met Kyle. Uh, I think it was Chaz. I think it was, it was one of the first Chaz matches of, uh, I think it was 2018 when I actually decided to kind of branch out and, and, mm-hmm. and shoot away from Calgary and, and learned about the whole shooting sports scene. So, yeah, I shot a lot of three gun, still miss three gun. <laughs> uh, hopefully we're able to, uh, you know, get some more platforms back and fire that up again, like full scale. Yeah, yeah. well, I, I think one of the uh, one of the things that is inter- interesting about what you've done, uh, you recently shot a three gun match at BTSA and you won with an RDB and like, Again, a, a, a platform I've largely written off the the bull pups, but apparently uh, uh, not really a limitation for you. Well, I'll be the first to say in in Ipsic three gun doesn't really matter. Uh, the gun that you shoot, as long as it's reliable and it's relatively accurate, you can do well with it, and you can do well with it at a high level. Um, it really doesn't matter until you're, in, in my opinion, beyond even my level. Um, when it comes down to what gun you actually shoot, I, a lot of my friends would, would kick my ass with a Glock <laughs> or, a, or a, like any other plastic striker fire gun. Right. So, I mean, you see a lot of the guys shooting these, these race guns, like a shadow two or like a really raced out AR, but I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I got that RDB because it, it really interested me as a left-handed shooter. Uh, like it was fully ambidextrous downward ejecting. I didn't have to do much of anything to, to actually shoot it. And, uh, most importantly, it wasn't banned. So, <laughs> and doesn't break parts on a fairly consistent basis because yeah. some of the other guns we have here in Canada, you get a thou or two thousand rounds into them and they start breaking parts on them. I haven't yeah, and I mean, many breakages on those. No, like, I mean, I don't know many people who have an RDB to be perfectly honest with you, but uh, like, it's a very simple gun when you when you strip it apart and it, like I've I've seen some catastrophic failures with Keltex in the past, but they seem to have knocked that one out of the park. Uh, it's mm-hmm. a pretty solid platform, um, reasonably accurate. Like for what we do in three gun, it's two and a half MOA accurate with like run of the mill barn all ammo. So enough that that if you do your part, you can. Like there's so many other things in a three gun match and or Ipsic that don't depend on the gun that you got to perfect first before <laughs> before your gun actually matters. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, maybe we can talk about that. I mean, so you can't just go straight from like, you can't just like practice at matches. What do you, what do you typically do for, uh, for training to, cause like not only did you get production optics, win, uh, a production optics win, but you were like two seconds off overall time, uh, for the IPSA Canadian nationals. Right. So like you're, oh, you're moving Corey? pretty Yeah. 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 Well, I, I, I shot a really, a really consistent match and that's always been a struggle for me. I, I was fairly surprised at myself, to be honest. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sell myself short. I did work very hard, but uh, typically for me, I get into a match in the first couple stages are you ramping up, you're kind of feeling out the match. And, and the first stage I shot was uh, three steel and a triple swinger, just a stand and shoot, which is by far not my forte. I like moving around. I like, I like solving mm-hmm. puzzles. 
And yeah, I, I, I crushed that. And I think that really set the, set the tone for the match. I was just able to shoot consistently uh, at speed and not get in my own head for the most part. For the most part, there was, uh, we had one very dramatic stage that uh, <laughs> we could talk about in a bit. But yeah, it, it was <laughs> like, especially shooting production optics, I'm starting to realize that it's um, like people will always say go after the like the points. 95% points is your goal, or 90% alphas mm-hmm. is your goal. And mm-hmm. uh, like if you if you have a dot, you're able to shoot. Uh, I don't want to say a lot faster, but you're able to shoot faster than than people who have iron sights, and you're able to um, you're able to shoot faster at distance as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a little bit more comforting to see actually like a red dot right on where you're hitting at 45 yards rather than like hey i know my like i I know i know my iron sights but if i'm off just a little bit or if i'm in an awkward position that that can change so um yeah definitely shooting at speed was was my forte at this match and it was a match that kind of lended itself to that yeah leaning on the red dot for those long distance shots and uh Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and getting them in, and you're pretty quick on your feet as well. What kind of what kind of practice or have you been doing uh, other than your matches? Like, do you dry fire in the basement? Do you just head out to BTSA often? Like, what's what's your uh, what's your key there? Yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, um, I've shot less than three thousand rounds this year. What? Uh, and all of it's at <laughs> all of it's at matches. Yeah. Wow. Um, okay. Wow. Or I shouldn't yeah. say all of it, but uh, Mel and I we went out to BTSA twice. Uh, we meant to go out like five or six times the week leading up to nationals, and then she got sick, so <laughs> we we kind of had to put that on pause. But we went out. Uh, what was it? The Thursday, the Wednesday before the Thursday was just our league night, and then the Monday before we flew out, we went out and practiced swingers a whole bunch, which really helped us. But, um, yeah, to be perfectly honest with you, my, my, my practice per se just consists of our Thursday night league night at BTSA that we do every single week starting in, in April. Uh, and I know that that probably surprises a lot of people, but, um, yeah, I, I haven't done more than three or four like isolated focus practice sessions on my own, uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's just shooting a lot of stages, uh, Getting that experience, uh, I think, has really helped me out. What do you but, think well, was? Uh, sorry, I was just gonna. You said you're consistent this time. What do you think is the key or the reason why you were so consistent this this match? I, I think it was actually uh, setting a like a proper goal for for the match. I didn't go out there to win nationals. I didn't go out there um, with the with the thought of getting a trophy and coming home with that. I thought I want to shoot to my ability. I want to make good stage plans and execute them properly. I want to be disciplined uh, in my shot placement and just uh, focus on fundamentals and kind of forget about the rest. And, and that's what I did. Like I, I would have, I had a few stages that were uh, in, in my mind, subpar, but for, I, I almost want to say the first time uh, shooting, I didn't let that bother me. I just moved on to the next stage and thought it's 18 stages. Um, you can, you can not perform at a hundred percent on one and still be in it. And that, that ended up being true. Um, Mm -hmm. that really the only time that I got in my head was I, I got a reshoot and that was on a big 32 round stage. So I like for anyone who doesn't know how IPSC is structured for, for 18 stages, you'll have kind of like a golf course. You'll have part threes, part fours, part fives. You'll have short, medium and long courses of fire and then a, a sanctioned level three they have to follow a certain ratio. So you'll only have, I think we had three long courses of fire. I mean, mm-hmm. it might be a little bit more than that, uh, but three 32 round stages. And for one of the 32 round stages on my fifth shot, I hit a popper that activated a swinger that I was going to take later on in the stage. I called a good hit on it. I heard a, I heard the steal, yeah. but I hit it on the very edge and it didn't go down. <laughs> I went across and kept going on my stage. And in the second position, I get there and I see that, one of the poppers wasn't set up and I wasn't stopped and I was looking around confused and I just kept going, fumbled my way through the stage. I get up to the point where I'm supposed to shoot the swinger. I don't see a swinger. So I'm thinking they got to stop me now. Like this, this is a range equipment failure (laughs) and they don't stop me. So I am having a heart attack now thinking, okay, that's obviously the popper didn't go down. That's a miss. The swinger didn't activate and I can't shoot it. That's a failure to engage and two misses. 
uh, I've already messed up my time. I'm, I'm basically having a mental heart attack right now and thinking that's it. My national mm -hmm. is over. Okay. And thank goodness the end of the stage comes and I'm, I'm out of my mind. And my teammate, Josh, uh, he just tells me, go back, load your mags, I'll handle this. And he talks to the range, the range master. They call the range master. They talk to the, the ROs. And, and 20 minutes later, I was, I was awarded a reshoot. And yeah, just like the rest of the match, I was able to get out of my own head, focus again and crush that stage. So it was, huh. yeah, I don't, I, I want to say it was just kind of the, it, my time came with, uh, with maturing in the sport and just having that experience of shooting a lot of matches. And your, um, how'd your reshoot go? The reshoot, I crushed it. I, I, I absolutely crushed it. I, I was a second faster than anyone. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I shot a little loose. Like if you, if you look at the scores, uh, what most people would consider to be a goal in minor, I shot like seven deltas and 50 something Charlies. It was actually, I think it was pretty close to, to the points that Corey shot. Uh, mm -hmm. But it was just the raw time. Like I, I made sure that I had the fastest time for most stages uh, out of everyone, and that that really paid off. Because it's hard to calculate that in in like in a walkthrough or anything like that, right? It's yeah. you think to yourself, yeah. okay, this is a ten second stage, and then you get off the stage, you go, oh wow, that was 13, 14 seconds. So I I really pushed the I really pushed the speed, uh, but I didn't I didn't get out of control, and I think that's uh, like I picked my match speed and I stuck with that. Yeah, I think um, when I do well at matches, it's because I got my, really got my foot on the gas when it comes to uh, keeping things on the ra ragged edge of control. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get you like you took your foot off the gas and you're like you're shooting it really comfortably, and and that's that's when I find like my my scores aren't nearly as 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 good as I, I'd like them to be. Well, and it's it's different for everyone, and only you know your the speed you can go at, right? Uh, like if I get to an end of a, the end of a stage and I'm thinking, oh, I shot that kind of slow. It may not look slow, but I know that I could have. I know that I could have done it faster, right? And I didn't feel like that. Uh, I felt like that maybe one or two stages at this match, but that was it. I felt okay. This is this is. I'm pushing it. If I pushed any more, I'd be missing. So yeah. So how how were the stages at nationals? So you you mentioned a couple of them now. Um, uh, how were the other stages? Anything memorable or anything that uh, anyone anywhere the the wheels fell off? Uh, none where the wheels fell off really that they, they were, when I looked at the match copy, cause typically when I, when I'm signed up for a match, I will look at the match copy as soon as it's posted, try and figure stuff out. And, and this time I was just, <laughs> I was kind of over it. And I, I looked at it the week before and I'm thinking, really, these are the, these are the stages and they were deceiving. Uh, when you, when you look at the match copy, it, it looks like a pretty simple, straightforward uh, match. And then you get there and they've got, they've got all these steel pushed out to distance and and there's mm. a lot of shots that um, just didn't seem to be a problem until you were stuck in a boat with in an unloaded start or something like that and uh they were challenging they were absolutely challenging and even when they aren't when you're at nationals uh we had one stage that was simply two positions you had uh like 25 30 yard steel on the right four of them and then you reloaded and you had four paper at five yards right in front of you so even a stage like that you're still having to execute at a high level against everyone else in the country right yeah it's yeah. not something where you can take a take a, a break right there's none of those at nationals um so yeah there was the the most memorable stage i think that everyone's going to notice when people start posting is is the launch with the big moving target that has four four targets on it uh that one I think I actually posted that one already. That one, you had to really nail down your timing and you had to be comfortable taking eight shots on a moving target in a about a four second window. And that's including uh, moving. Wow. Huh. So that was, that really demanded a lot of, of everyone. And I was, I, honestly, I thought that that stage was going to get thrown out because they had at least a dozen range equipment failures of stuff not activating or breaking parts. And uh, yeah, we had to we get we had to get dragged back at the end of the day to shoot that stage uh, because they just said we're taking too much time. Just move on. Huh. Well, that's the that's the trouble with like really interesting stuff is that it's it's yeah. interesting, but the reliability usually isn't there compared to like a popper yeah. or or paper. Exactly. <laughs> it was still a lot of fun, and people are going to be talking about that stage for for a while. Um, but yeah, it's it belongs at a level three and and nowhere else really. 
<laughs> and it, unless you have a really dedicated staff that has a lot of spare parts and they know exactly how it works. Uh, but even then sometimes they're just, they're just too much. They're just too much to handle at a match. Yeah. Yeah. I know that feel. I know the feeling of like yeah. having props that are too complicated and then they slow down the match and then things go in sideways. That's, that's yeah. happened. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of, uh, of Mikey's stage. I don't know if it was Battle of Alberta. It was, I think it was 2018 where he had that tractor that pulled you oh, back yeah. as oh, you yeah. shot. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of that. It was one of those ones we're just going to keep talking about. It was that was a cool demanding. stage though. That was worth it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That's, that sounds incredible. That's a, uh, uh, yeah, really, really big achievement that you've got there. Um, sounds like a, sounds like a pretty good time out there as well. So uh, which range was it at? Atlantic Marks. It was at the Atlantic Marksman, correct? Atlantic it was AMA. Marksman. Yeah, it was AMA, the, the Ralph Dunn range. Yeah. Uh, which is beautiful, beautiful range. Too bad it rained the whole time that we were shooting. But. I, heard, other... I, I heard, I heard that uh, Wednesday and Thursday were beautiful, then Friday and Saturday and Sunday, but not so much. Yeah, we showed up on. I flew in on Wednesday, didn't shoot till Friday. So I showed up uh, with Blake on Thursday and we just watched people shoot and it was gorgeous. It was probably 28 degrees and sunny, no wind. Uh, (laughs) We show up on, on uh, Friday and it's honestly, even, even with the rain, it's Atlantic. And so when it's raining, it's not that bad. It was still 23 degrees. Like hands aren't going numb. Really Mm -hmm. the worst of it was just having a, like making sure you got a good grip on your gun, but. It's not like Alberta when it's when it's raining here and you're shooting. It's like okay, my hands are cold. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know where my trigger is. So the yeah, targets are starting range. to droop. Did they bag them or did they use those wax targets? They used the wax targets. Uh, oh, nice. And they were they were good for for not having any um, any slip ups on target placements or anything like that. Um, yeah, they they were meticulous. If anything started to droop or not was it wasn't able to be scored properly, they were. Changing it out, yeah. yeah. Have you it's shot at, Yeah. Have you shot at AMA before? Is this your first time there, or no? This is my first time shooting any IPSC uh, in the rest of Canada. Oh, really? Uh, outside of Alberta, yeah. I've shot some yeah. three gun. Uh, we shot uh, in BC and uh, Sas- uh, where was it? Saskatoon. Yeah, Saskatoon. Yeah. Yeah. The Prairie Fire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Prairie Fire. Uh, but yeah, no, I I haven't been out to the East Coast since I was like nine. So yeah, I'm really glad that I stayed the extra day and came a day early. Is that Halifax is beautiful. Yeah, you got to the East Coast. Host, uh, I was going to say hostility. It's not a hostility. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. Okay, Halifax, we're armed. <laughs> but uh, hospitality. Um, but yeah. Anyways, yeah, I, I find that surprising that you haven't really, well, for Ipsic, but three gun, even three gun, it's kind of limited as well. Yeah, well, and, and we were kind of the place to be for three gun, right? Alberta and then yeah. Saskatchewan and, and BC. Um, really glad that I got my time in with that before before we lost everything because those were those were some of the best matches I've ever shot. To be perfectly honest with you, yeah, um, yeah. a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, I shot uh, I shot USPSA nationals down south last year, as but I haven't been to the rest of Canada for for any kind of shooting. I've been meaning to, so I'm I'm glad I got to go. So so you shot U- USPSA nationals? Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. How'd that go? <laughs> Not so great. Less, less loading. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, far less loading. Um, yeah, in fact, I even came home with extra ammo because I, I DQ'd with two stages left. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's actually where I met Max. Uh, Max and I were the the two PO shooters who were really going at it neck and neck mm-hmm. at, at nationals. And yeah, we we bumped together down in Alabama, and and we weren't on the same schedule, so I didn't really get to see him shoot until Instagram. Um, but man, got along really well with that guy. He's a great dude. Um, he did pretty well for himself. He did. He got 16th, I think, overall at mm-hmm. Optics Nationals. So yeah, pretty strong placement by him. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> I was a little goofy that match. That's kind of the contrast match to this Nationals. Is I was just up and down, up and down, up and down. And then I shot one into the ground, and that was done. Uh, oh, that was done. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I learned my lesson on that one. 
Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're actually our, our last topic at the last slam fire radio was dealing with frustration while shooting. And it's kind of yeah. funny because sometimes mm -hmm. it gets in your head and yeah, you have those, those roller coaster matches and so, and it sounds like for this last match, you slayed it. You just got in the mm -hmm. bubble, got like get focused on the fundamentals and it's something that we talk mm -hmm. about a lot and it's uh yeah, you just say exactly everyone who's, who shoots at a high level always says the same thing. They don't go out there to win. They go out there to like lay down the fundamentals, shoot really fast, yeah. do like follow their steps and that kind of thing. And the result mm -hmm. is just going to be the result. And uh, yeah, a lot of the top shooters that I've, I've talked to um, down in the U S that they, they say that the real difference between like a master shooter and a grandmaster is they can, they usually can shoot at the same level of performance uh, the grandmasters have a better mental game. They're able yep. to kind of be more consistent, uh, mm -hmm. and more calm. Um, and I mean, you're going to see masters beat grandmasters on the out stage, right? But uh, that's kind of the differentiating factor. Um, but yeah, and and setting a goal that's realistic, right? Nothing that really depends on other people, uh, right? Like Max and I would be back and forth all match, like, hey, how'd you do on this stage? Like, I'd, I'd walk back to the last bay because he's right behind me, and we'd be checking on mm -hmm. each other. And, and hey, okay, good luck. Like it looks like we're really, really close. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just well, uh, making making your goal about yourself and not not depending on other people. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, and you and I have talked about the whole goal setting thing yep. before, and you know, good to see it put into practice and executed fantastically. Yeah, that was just a few months ago we were talking about that, and yeah, it it works. <laughs> it works. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask a question back to your training. I know you mentioned you haven't shot much uh, live fire, but what's your dry fire? Because you don't get to where you got at nationals by just picking up the gun a couple times a couple weeks before the ma the match. So no, no, dry fire is uh, fundamental, and it's in my opinion more important, much more important than your live fire. Uh, you still need to live fire. Absolutely. You need to, you need to learn how the gun moves in your hand. You need to learn how your trigger resets and how your dots move around. But, um, yeah, dry fire is where you really learn a lot of your fundamentals of movements, uh, for like, especially your grip and your trigger control. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's just like over the winter when I'm not shooting at all, uh, that's, that's what I do. Like <laughs> if I'm, especially in the pandemic and, and to be perfectly honest, that's, that's what made the difference in my mind is like, I got, I got a shout out to right before, right before the pandemic kicked off. And so, man, it was frustrating and, and it wasn't fun, but like all I could do is, is dry fire, not able to go outside and do anything else. And so that's what I did. I just got a bunch of those uh, sticky targets on my wall and I just started really, really nailing down the fundamentals, like that, like a thousand draws in a month and and just like countless reloads and and moving to certain positions and eventually i got to the point where i was making small stages um in my garage in my basement and you would you would treat it like a match you you make a plan on here's okay here's the targets that are in play for this stage here's how i want to execute it here's the positions i need to hit here's how i want to enter here's how i want to exit here's my footwork how i'm going to orient my my hips and everything and uh and you give yourself one shot at it and then sometimes i'd film it sometimes i wouldn't and then you go back and you say okay what did i do good what did i what did i mess up on that's what i need to work on um but yeah eventually you get to the point where you need to pull the trigger on some live ammo <laughs> to to really make a difference and that's where i think like man my my whole family at btsa that's that's been invaluable for me to to learn how to shoot well is is just being able to shoot a few stages every single week uh, in, in an environment where I can, I can put stress on myself if I want. And if I'm just there to have fun, I, I do that too. Um, mm -hmm. and that's, that's also been pretty important. It's just like, you got to take it seriously, but it, it'll burn you out if you, if yeah. you just keep it serious the whole time. Yeah. You have to have fun. It's simple. Yeah. For yeah sure. You got to have fun. <laughs> yeah. And we had have a fun lot of fun. <laughs> try some crazy stuff. And those are times where you can just, you know what, this is really crazy. I wouldn't do this in a match, but yeah, let's try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really open it up. Right. Yeah. So this guy's a little rambunctious. You mentioned that uh, you got a shadow too. So did you replace the? Because um, you were running not a Walther, or were you running before the Sig? I was running an X5. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and and I, I wouldn't even say I replaced it. Like I, I I still plan to shoot that actually at provincials. Um, the shadow two is just I, I wanted to see what all the fuss was about because everyone's saying run a shadow two like it's the it's the best gun out there, 
And uh, don't get me wrong, it's, it's great. And it definitely beats out any other trigger out there that I've tried, unless you're going to like a carry options guys who can get a striker trigger down like two pounds. And that scares me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, like I, I feel more at home with a, with a SIG, to be honest. Uh, nothing against the Shadow 2, but I, I do like shooting my SIG. Like I enjoy shooting it more. And I would not say that my performance between those two platforms is significantly different. Yeah. Uh, the, like the one exception is if, if someone at a match decides to put like four targets at one yard and I have to pull the trigger as fast as I humanly can, yeah, my Shadow 2 is going to beat it out. Uh, but accuracy wise, they're both pretty much on par. Um, yeah. Yeah. Everything else about the guns, like I, I feel like I can, there's a lot of manipulations I can do just better with the SIG. Just from, I don't know if it's experience or it's just, it feels like it. Like home, you've got lots of reps on it. You got yeah. lots of reps on it. What yeah. um, what kind of dot were you running? Uh, up until about a month ago, I was running a just a Venom. Like for the last three years, it's just been a Vortex Venom. Uh, the the Venoms. I mean, I'm like everything else. If it works, like getting a getting a $900 dot, I don't think it's going to make a difference for you. Unless you're the guy who shoots 40,000 rounds a year and breaks a handful of dots and has to send them in for warranty, then yeah, you're probably going to want to figure out what the most durable one is. But uh, like I switched to a, a Romeo 3 Max, the SIG Romeo 3 Max, three weeks before Nationals because it came on my P320 Max and I thought, hey, I'll give this a shot and uh, just cut away at my slide more than I should have. And, <laughs> on there and, yeah, yeah, that's a story. Uh, that's a that's a garage gunsmithing story for you. Sorry, gonna... we do a little bit of that. We do a little bit of garage gunsmithing around here. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. I haven't looked at the Sig Romeo Three Max. How's the price on that thing? Like especially the open guys. Oh. We can't hear you very well, Taylor. I think your mic yeah. your mic is on your uh, computer there. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry. Oh, there we go. Introduced by Max How's Michelle, that? so it must be it must be good then if Max is shooting it. Sorry, I just <laughs> had to toss my dog back inside. All good now? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, where'd you lose me? I was rambling about something. Something Sigma about Romeo a, a dog. Max. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I did a little bit of garage gunsmithing, but. Um, I don't notice a difference. Honestly, I've shot I've shot a couple matches. I shot nationals with it. I, if I threw my venom back on, I wouldn't notice any difference. It's okay. it's a dot. It's red. Put it on the target and pull the trigger. Um, like they, I might just not be at that level where it really matters, like Max Michelle. Um, but I mean, it's bigger. Yeah, uh, it's got the auto off feature and everything, all the cool bells and whistles. But at the end of the day. <laughs> A dot's a dot. <laughs> huh. Okay. You say you're not at the level of Max Michelle, but like you're 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 up in the upper echelons. If you're if you're like top top two percent in Canada, you're uh, you're you're probably somewhere up there. Like it would be curious to to see how you would do it at, at USPSA Nationals now. Uh, if you if you shot like the whole thing clean and mm -hmm. like steady. I'd I'd be curious to see how you do. Like the U.S. is more competitive. There's more people, and they they, they take their shooting very seriously. Yeah. But uh, yeah. it still it would still be really interesting to see like how much you've progressed since the last time you went to to nationals. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and and uh, like I'm definitely a better shooter than I was a year ago. Uh, but I I think it was a lot of the mental mental issues for me and just not not being prepared, not being focused that really kind of put me in the dumps down there. Mm -hmm. um, also not being used to <laughs> 23 rounds on a mag and, and keeping my eyes up on a stage at all times. That was, that was a real different experience for me. Like yeah. up here we're used to, you shoot a, you shoot one array and maybe one extra target and you're, you're all of a sudden your eyes are down your mag well and your hands go into your belt. Right. Um, and, <laughs> and down there, uh, my dad and I actually went down to Montana uh, back in May, I believe. And we shot their, their state championship. And sure enough, we get to a stage and, and uh, I shot, I think, 14 rounds out of my mag. And then as I'm moving, I go for my mag. I go for a reload. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? What am I thinking? And that, <laughs> that threw everything off. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different style of shooting where you're, you always have your grip. Your eyes are always on a target and you're just, it's like, it's more of a marathon than uh, a couple of little sprints. 
So, but it it it's not it's not a huge hurdle to get over. But when you only shoot one match a year, with yeah, real magazines, it's yeah. it can be an issue. Oh yeah, I've done that down in the states too with rifle and pistol. You used to changing doing a mag change after a single array or something, and yep. People ask you at the end, why'd you reload so much during that stage? I don't know. Forgot how many rounds I had. <laughs> yeah. 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 Too used when the to gun's it. heavy, yeah. heavy. 23 round mags and a shadow too. That was like a, like pulling a brick <laughs> out of your belt. Yeah. <laughs> Probably great for recoil control. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And then it starts to taper off as you lose. Who's yeah. that? You start to yeah. start to empty Starting it out. To get a little snappier. It's like, oh, time to make change. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. I think I think that actually could be a hindrance for Canadians that go down to the U.S. to shoot. Yeah. Just I, I, it's it's not what we're used to, and yeah, it's it's just one more thing to worry about, right? That's yeah. that you have to have on your mind that that they don't. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, why yeah. You'll, you'll see a lot of a lot of guys going down to shoot like classic division. A lot of the divisions that are the same mag capacity as us, so they don't have to yeah. worry about the mags. They they don't have to worry about shooting a different style. Yeah, that's it's true. Just go down there and shoot. But okay. I I feel like if I did that, I'd still want to shoot the big mags. Yeah, you would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I get down there. I'm like, why did I bring my carry off gun? Why did I shoot classic? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, what's the biggest thing that you're going to take away from the nationals this year? What's your most memorable thing? Oh, um, man, I'm still trying to. I'm still trying to wrap my head around being a being a Are national you, champion. Have, have you digested it yet? No. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, every night I go to bed and and I think I'm gonna wake up and it's like a, we're gonna be back at last Wednesday. And I'm about to fly out and it's gonna be like okay, check yourself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what's next? I guess is like, what, what do I do? I've won a national championship. What, what can I do now? Okay. And like maybe worlds. Um, I, I don't know if I can swing going to worlds this year. Uh, I, I honestly could probably get a spot right now if I wanted, but it's just ridiculously expensive to get to time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just focusing on, on provincials. Now we got provincials in a month um, and just keeping, keeping my shooting at the same level and, and trying to figure out, um, what I yeah, what do I do to improve now? Okay. Um, do you think that there's more pressure on you now that you've won? Yeah, yeah. Well, and <laughs> and uh, Sorry, well, I the, well, laugh, but it's like, oh my god, <laughs> no, I, you know, I yeah. Can't well, there's stage now because <laughs> exactly. Well, and there's no expectations on you when you go there and you're an underdog and and I mean nobody's won or nationals since 2019, right? So correct. Um, like Max hadn't shot production optics yet i hadn't shot production optics yet um so it was really hard to to see what was going to happen but uh, i had uh, alex Burdat, the now five-time national champion production came up to me at the end and he says hey uh <laughs> like congrats now you got a target on your back now uh <laughs> now there's going to be all the pressure of people coming after you right um uh, like not not in a malicious way not in a bad now, way now you're the but... champ now you're the guy to beat right, right. Um, yeah you're the target yeah yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't feel like I've been in that position before. Um, so yeah, it's it's gonna it's gonna take a little bit to digest. I know it's been four, four days now, but yeah, it's gonna take a bit to digest. Well, I, I definitely a, got it. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, this could be a whole other part for your mental game. Is yeah. n- trying to push that aside and still just shoot your match and not worry about what people's expectations of you are yeah or even your own because you're a national champ right like it's gonna exponentially increase that so now it's gonna be harder to push that down so yeah well and and to be honest like i i love all the people that i shoot with and and max max and i were i think eight points apart that's a minor mistake on any given stage any minor mistake and he's the and he's the national champ um, so I mean, like it, it, it'll probably be the same next year. Like we're probably going to be just as prepared. Um, and, and I'm really looking forward to that. Max is a great dude to shoot with, uh, just a great dude to hang out with. And, uh, I'm really looking forward to doing with him next year. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, yeah, we can get more, more heat in, in production optics. Cause there was a bunch of shooters, uh, from other divisions in Alberta that didn't manage to get to, to nationals, um, so like I yeah I would I would love to have everyone there next year and 
um, and really see what people are capable of. But yeah, right now it's just kind of taking it in and celebrating. Yeah, yeah. I think that you're going to have to do that. But at the same time, I think you mentioned it. You said, okay, just continue. You have to still continue to have fun. Um, mm-hmm. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. You've already, you're already shown how good you are now at provincials. Just go and have fun. Cause that's what it is. It's just the provincials. I think, mm-hmm. I think you, you have that's a good like, way of thinking of it. Yeah. So you have nothing else to prove. You've already proved <laughs> at nationals, <laughs> right? This is a fun yeah. match now with your, your buds. Um, yeah. But I mean, every, every match is like every match is an opportunity to, to do well is. or to, or to crash and burn. Right. And so like, it doesn't matter if you're a world champion or not. Like, there's been yeah. matches that I've seen Max Michelle just absolutely crash. I'm thinking you've won worlds multiple times, and I bet you if you asked him, he'd say it doesn't matter. This is a new match. Yeah, right? that's true. Exactly. Yeah, uh, that was yesterday. That was yesterday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? It's also the last shot was the last shot that you just done. Now we're going to concentrate on the new shot. So it's just like the same thing with the match too, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but. I think that you said that you're already better prepared. You were better prepared this year with from your mental game. I think that you are going mm-hmm. to be going forward as well. I think that you have some great goals. You know, the goal itself is you're not competing against other people. You're you're actually working. The goal is to do better than you've done last time mm-hmm. uh, for, with yourself. And mm-hmm. yeah. Well, and I'd like to see the sport grow more. Like, well, and all yeah. the shooting sports grow more, right? Like it's, yeah. it's going to be uh, like regardless of the political situation, it's going to be a tough at least next year um, the, with the the ammo shortage and not being able to get really any yeah. any components. Well, at least primers next year is going to be really devastating to a lot of a lot of people. It's you're going to see a, a tapering off in participation, I think. Um, so it, keeping that keeping that culture alive and keeping that um, keeping the matches filled uh I, in alberta that's probably not going to be a problem but um, yeah with with ammo getting so expensive um, I, I hope that we don't see any kind of decline in our sport because i love the yeah. sport and i want more and more people to to participate in it not less yeah for I think, sure i think there is going to be a little bit of a surge because so many people are buying pistols that's um true. yeah and with that, they're going to want to do something with it. So get the black badge and maybe IPSEC, but you're absolutely right. I think that this is something that we talked about already, uh, the cost of gas, the cost of ammo mm-hmm. and the, you know, the availability of ammo and components. Uh, it's, it will have an impact on people as well. Yeah. Well, and, well. and especially like gas, we, we've had a number of matches this year where people are switching to, to like carpooling as many people as they possibly can in their van to a match out in Tabor, like a two and a half hour drive Mm -hmm. or people getting like a, getting like a, a dual sport bike and spending $12 in gas to get there instead of, instead of 80. Right. Um, So people are getting creative, but it's definitely a strain, especially in this province where you got to travel so far to get to matches. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's you're, you're seeing a lot of people not going to certain matches. I won't go up North right now. Like mm-hmm. I won't, I won't go to Bonneville or, or Fort Mac. I would love to go. It's just financially unfeasible. Right. And, yeah. And this is a game of resource management. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it is, it, it is what you have to do. It's yeah. our sport is not inexpensive. Yeah. So you do actually, you do actually have to actually have some money for it. But at the same time, I think that, I think there will be more people getting into the sport itself. Hopefully at some point it'll get less expensive. We will have more ammo available and maybe even, Hey, you never know. We might have a drop in gas prices. I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> we might even have some better laws that are coming out. Or Yeah, that would be really yeah. nice. That would be perfect. So here's yeah. the message. We just need to actually change the political climate and do that in the next election. And then we're golden, I think. Well, no, I'm optimistic. I'm quite optimistic about that, to be honest. And, and there's a lot of shooters that I've just run into at the range or just in gun stores. Uh, like I never thought about buying a handgun before, and now I've got one. Right? So what do I what do I do with it? And I'm like, well, here's one option: like come yeah. shoot up sick. <laughs> yeah, I think that 
there's somebody that was on our thread here a little bit earlier that was stating he he's brand new. He just he just bought his first handgun. He wants to get his black batch now. Wants mm-hmm. to go and shoot Ipsic because that's where the cat that's cat's meow. That's what everybody's talking about. Mm-hmm. He's polling people. What should I do with this? Go and shoot Ipsic. So I think that everybody and then there's going to be another there's the next who's going to be the another next um taylor um ah. there's always going to be somebody that will replace will replace the person that was the previous champion they'll be faster oh yeah younger guys right younger yeah yep, like there will be we've got junior shooters here in alberta that are you know, 15, 16 years old. And man, it's watching them is scary. Thinking if I, I, I didn't get into the sport until I was, what, 24, 25? Uh, imagining what these kids are going to be like at 20, like 20, like in, in two years with the resources that they have and, and, and the experience that they have, it's going to be scary. You're going to see some hopefully national champions uh, in junior division. That would be, that would be exciting. And that, that would be a, a good indicator of the health of the sport, right? Yep. Yep, for yep. sure. Yep. And the future of it, yeah. 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 <laughs> what <are you> lying <laughs> <laughs> we always have dogs on the show. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well this guy he wants all the attention, so Well Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a, is that somebody else locked up that just wants out as well? Oh, that yeah, that's my puppy. That's tough. He's uh, uh, okay. he sees he sees someone out here. Okay. <laughs> um. Uh, Adriel, Adriel had to actually leave. Um, uh, but I didn't have any other questions for you, Ed Taylor, other than, you know, I thought it was fantastic you being able to come onto the show, and uh, just uh, tell us all about your experience. What about you over there, half? I don't have any other questions, but I do want to make a comment because I've known taylor since he first pretty much he had first a or second year shooting three gun <laughs> yeah uh, like five years just to, to see where you were and where you've come it's amazing to see huge congratulations uh really good to see you put everything together thanks Kyle. appreciate that it's it's been a ride and uh <laughs> yeah i fell in love with this sport and really glad that i met so many great people including yourself along the way and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Really, uh, really happy for you. Really excited for you. And thanks, uh, Kelly. yeah, thanks for coming on tonight. Uh, yeah, thanks you- for having me. Was, uh, that was really exciting. Actually, I'm really, really <laughs> happy to be able to talk about it. <laughs> Yay. Um, is there anybody that you want to give a shout out to? No. Oh, well, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle's helped me out since the start of the sport. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ken, uh, Ken from P3, he was at my black badge back in 2019 and, and he, he's been helping me out since then and, and just giving me guidance on the sport itself and helping me out with, uh, with getting ammo and everything. And he is fundamental and, and instrumental in, in me getting my national champion for championship for sure. Um, yeah, but my old family, uh, everyone at BTSA like that, that is a, that is another integral part of this like having a having a good like local club family that you're able to you know like just hang out with on a weekly basis and compete with and, and yeah it's the social aspect of it too right it keeps you going um definitely them yeah all and everyone across alberta like all the all the um alberta team guys that i shot with um like we're even if i didn't shoot nationals just going out there to to spend time with them is um, we don't get to do it very often that was that was a lot of fun um, so yeah, big shout out to everyone in Pacific Alberta and uh, yeah, everyone who won. Like Corey, man, getting your first national title, man, congrats! Yeah. And uh, same with John Zerka, like that's that's pretty impressive. You guys are, uh, I don't want to say old, but you're you're older than I am, and, and you're <laughs> kids national. So big congrats to those two guys. I know they worked really really hard to get to get where they are. I'm sure that they'd say the same same thing to you. Not that you know they'd be saying you know this young kid that's coming up and. They'd call you the young kid, probably. Yeah, the, yeah. Uh, yeah it's good. <laughs> but congratulations <laughs> to you. You work really hard on it as well. So thanks, um, thanks again for coming on. Uh, we're going to have our regular show tomorrow night, uh, but we wanted to get you on um, 
specifically to to give an update on how it went and to just say congratulations to you good luck with the provincials by the way yeah thank you yeah i'm excited to to watch it tomorrow uh is it is it up tomorrow is it's gonna be live tomorrow so we're gonna do the other portion of the show tomorrow live and then yeah, yeah. we'll put it uh through the magic of editing we'll put uh your interview in with the regular show and we'll we'll um send it out to everybody so it'll be available on youtube and it'll be also available through the podcasts so wherever you listen to podcasts so yeah cool yeah i'll spread the word awesome <laughs> sounds good thanks, <laughs> thanks guys again. have a great night thanks you as and well okay good night everybody thanks again to taylor to coming on to talk to us about the ipsic nationals uh and his experience and also big congratulations for how great he did definitely with uh, the production optics win and beating out tons of great open shooters and the rest bring in the heat to listener feedback sorry i said he's bringing the heat oh yeah absolutely yeah oh yeah ramped it up big time I didn't know people in Alberta were good at shooting. <laughs> <laughs> so we had to fly out to you. We had to fly out to, to Nova Scotia to show you that we were actually pretty okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have some okay shooters. Yeah. We have some okay ones. Yeah. Yeah. For every Kyle. For the Alberta eight, listeners, that was a joke. Please or... don't send hate mail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'll get into listener feedback. Um, Sponsored by Armory DC Gunsmith. Armory DC Gunsmith is a full-service gunsmith who specializes in firearms refinishing. He offers hot bluing, park rising, and Cerakote finishes, as well as wood refinishing. Check out his online inventory of new and used guns, firearms accessories, optics, and more at dcgunsmith.ca, or you can follow on Facebook or Instagram. Doesn't look like we have any letters or messages this evening. What a shame. Everyone's on holidays. Everyone's on holidays right now. Okay. Um, if you'd like to support the show, you can do that, and we'd appreciate it through uh, Patreon. You can find us at uh, www.patreon.com forward slash slamfire radio. And uh, do we have any shout outs this evening? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I've got one to uh, Taylor for doing a bang up job there, and then uh, to Shane for selling me some primers. Thanks, Shane. Uh, uh, you know, slide into my DMs. <laughs> Thanks, Shane. Is that a preemptive thank you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll thank you now. I'll thank you after you send the primers. Yeah. There it is. Uh, I wanted to give a huge shout out to uh, Jay uh, for arranging to get us up to Penetanguishing and also for adrian for letting us crash at his uh parents cottage and also for russ and adrian for having um for they were our our instructors for the weekend did a great job fantastic job awesomeness i enjoyed the weekend immensely so thanks for that awesome uh i'd like to show not only taylor but the rest of the alberta Shooters that were at Ipsic Nationals that absolutely crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Alberta sure. had a really sure. strong representation sure. this year. Yeah. For sure. Good for Alberta. Awesome. We Mo, love Alberta, of course. Do you have any shout outs <laughs> you want to do? No. No shout outs. No shout outs. Okay. Check us out on Gunners of Canada. Like us on Facebook. We have thousands and thousands of likes likes give us a review on facebook join the ccfr which is very very important and uh see you all next week and good night dave night dave good night dave (laughs) good night